Take off. How's it going my Jimbos? I'm back with another tutorial for you today. This time we're going to make a new sound design tutorial boys. I haven't done one in a while actually. And yeah, I have no sound prepared for today. But instead I'm going to show you the process that I go through when I make a bass. So hell yeah. <coughs> So I've got a pretty blank project right here, it's simply just a serum with no preset at all and just a limiter on the master so so it doesn't clip. So yeah, there's no effects, no post-processing, we are going to do that from scratch so it will be pretty interesting. <laughs> So the first thing that I would do is um, I would go for a MIDI clip right here and I will put the bass on the second octave. Okay, so once I've done that, I would actually go for a trigger mode on the LFO and I would do a shape kind of like this. And pretty much this shape would just modulate the whole level of the sound. And I would actually go for LFO2 and create a different type of shape for the modulation right here. So yeah, this should sound kind of like this. <coughs> pretty, pretty shit. So another thing I would do is I would search for some FM wavetables pretty much. Uh, let's try this. And that, that's pretty basic. So let's go to our LFO2 and modulate the wavetable position. Make sure the triggered is on. And now I'm going to turn on the oscillator B and turn the level all the way down because you don't want signal from this coming. And I don't know, it's up to you on what octave you want to put this. I usually put it on minus one so it gives some nice FM vibes. And obviously the infamous FM from B thing here. We're going to activate that. And now let's see how this shit modulates the whole sound. Okay, so let's modulate that. And I've actually added some remap. Remapping is pretty cool because you can warp the whole wavetable however you want. So hell yeah, this this is looking nice. Maybe let's modulate that too. So it gives more movement to our shit here. And let's actually go ahead and add a pretty nice comp filter. By the way, always boost that motherfucking resonance and also the drive. And also, if you're using flanges, make sure you are turning this on because it will actually follow your notes. So let's say I play a note here, but if I play a note higher, this whole shit will move. And if we find a nice spot here, we can also modulate that. Hey, that's nice too. And now the first thing that I would do is add that sweet multiband compressor. Nice. And maybe let's add some distortion too. Let's see how that goes. Maybe we can modulate that too. Also, we can add an EQ. And the cool thing about EQing is that you can add this uh, high pass thing and you can modulate it and turn it into a filter. Also, you can do the same thing here, but with a peak, so you can create a high peak filter. Also, I love overusing the phaser, and if you're going to use the phaser, don't forget to turn the rate down, because that means that you'll be able to keep the phasing on one point. The rate means that the whole phase will just start moving, so make sure you're turning that off, because uh, you don't want that. And you can mess around with the depth and frequency, I just like to uh, modulate it this way. And don't always turn this all the way up because it obviously sounds pretty oh. shit, but it adds to the vowel. <laughs> also, you can use again some flanger thing. <laughs> and maybe you can modulate this too. <laughs> you can also modulate the resonance and with the drive up. So yeah, that sounds pretty nice so far. Maybe you can add a flanger too, which is like a, a, the same same thing, I guess. But it just adds a lot more to the sound. Also, one tip, try to always modulate the mix and stuff, because again, modulating your bass a lot means that you'll add a lot of movement to it.
Okay, so this doesn't sound too powerful so far, which is not really what we want. We want our basses to go like... So what I usually do is I add an EQ, an EQ8, and I just cut out the lows. And what I usually do to clean up my sound is I would create these kind of peak things and move them around to see what frequencies hurt the most. This is a really painful process, but it works, okay? So hell yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me boost maybe just there and maybe let's boost the highs just a tiny bit. Okay, that sounds pretty cool, but it needs some compression. So let's definitely add a pretty nice OTT. You can add the Xfer OTT, this one, if you use FL or anything. It is kind of the same thing, but I don't know. Basically, the amount is the depth in uh, the X for OTT. So pretty much, let's turn this around 30, 40%, I don't know. I just turn the time all the way up. And also add that output gain. And that's pretty nice, but it doesn't sound so full. So again, let's add the Camel Crusher. And maybe I don't want the Camel Crusher to distort the multiband compression, so I'm going to put it before that. And the way I like to uh, saturate my bases is turn down the distortion and lower the compression just, just a bit and turn this mouth oh. all the way up. Touch, Terog, touch. Also, you can glue the whole sound with a glue compressor. It's the Cytomic compressor, but the company made an external plugin that you can use yourself. So basically this plugin. So again, I prefer to use the Ableton one because it's more accessible, I guess. So the way I like to do it is just start compressing with the threshold and add some makeup, obviously, and boost that attack up. And also turn on the soft clipping. It kind of needs some room and some stereo image. So the way I like to do that is basically add a utility and pretty much make the whole sound mono, okay? So if you hear the sound right now, it is just mono. We can add to the stereo image by adding a Serum FX plugin and pretty much adding a hyper dimension, okay? But we don't want hyper because this pretty much phases the whole sound and it destroys it. I don't like size either, so I'm just going to boost the mix to like 53% or something. And now you can hear that we have a really clean non-compressed, non-distorted, non-saturated stereo image. And an extra tip you can do is add a reverb with a very small mix and just decay to about 0.20 seconds, I don't know. Add a high cut and depth. And you can see that now it, it has so much more cooler room to it. And the very last thing that I would do is adding a soft clipping to this sound because I don't really like limiting in general. Maybe what you can also add is another EQ. And again, just try to EQ the whole process sound basically. So this sounds pretty nice. Maybe we can add a little volume to it. And we managed to make a pretty nice bass with some pretty nice processing. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and actually learned something from it. Uh, I will be giving away this preset and the project file containing the preset, basically. Yeah, I mean, if you don't use Ableton and use FL, you will have this sound itself, pretty much. But you will need to follow my instructions, basically, and do the whole effect chain by yourself in FL and recreate it. And if you're an Ableton user, you can check the whole project by yourself and break it down. I don't know. So yeah, dudes, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this tutorial. I'm going to post a lot more because school is about to end. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.